Hello chess lovers, Soren here and in today's video I want to share with you one of the most dramatic games ever played. This game will just leave you speechless. On the white side is Russian chess grandmaster Alexander Marazevich and his opponent is French chess grandmaster Maxime Vachet Lagrave. The game dates back to year 2009 and was played at BL International Chess Festival. Morro opened up with e4 to which Enviel answered with c5, Sicilian defense. A uh, razor sharp opening which leads to double edged positions. Yes, in this game you will see how heated the board will become. By the way, as you can see, I left Stockfish run. Meanwhile, neither variation appears on the board, but then Black sets up the Scheveningen setup. So, I decided to leave Stockfish run in order you can see how the evaluation changes since the, the upcoming positions are very complex and uh, you need an engine to understand what's going on. Maybe you even need to set up this position on your board and analyze after the video as well many equations may arise. Meanwhile white chose the English attack. White is castling queenside and is getting ready to throw all his anger at opponent's king. Here black has two main choices b4 and bishop b7. In the game we have b4, knight e2, queen c7. Black is pretty much, uh, I would say both players are pretty much following the main theory. h4, d5. Knight f4. At the time knight f4 was a novelty. Several months earlier bishop f4 had been seen. It was Sabo who made against Eric Kislik. Uh, alternatives are g5 and bishop h3. Ok, knight f4. A nice novelty by Moro. And as you can see he is playing pretty accurately. Uh, I guess nah, he is still in his preparations. Yeah, definitely, definitely he is in his preparations. We are still on move 12. Yes, yeah, Turkish doesn't suggest knight f4, but it's a good move. Okay, white is provoking this e5, something which was made in the game. We have a fork, but then lands knight f e6. Looks amazing, right? White is making a peace sacrifice. And thus he's shattering opponent's king side and by provoking e5 also weakens this d5 square as well, right? Let's see how is this madness going to end up. Then the pawn on d5 drops queen a2, meanwhile already we have a mating threat, queen d3 creating a loop for the king also threatening queen g6 check, king f7 neutralizing the threat and this time there lands a g5. Knight takes d5. This is a mistake. As you can see, the evaluation now changes in white's favor. The idea is that if takes, then takes, and in the end of the day, black is winning the knight on e6, and black is better. Black is managing to simplify, and materially is better. But of course, white is not going to capture on d5, and we have bishop h3. By the way, at this point, Instead of knight d5, as you can see, the best move is h takes g5 if check, then king g8. If bishop h3, creating a mating threat, then bishop c5, creating a luft. Okay, after king f7, we have g5, there goes knight takes d5 and bishop h3, protecting the knight already, black knight is hanging. And by the way, if a move like bishop b7, there is even a very nasty move, knight c7, guys, knight c7. What a move, what a move. Okay, after bishop h3, we have knight takes e3, and a nice submission took knight d8 check, the best move, knight d8, go buddy, knight d8 check, king e7, well, king e7 or king e8, if here then bishop d7 with a check. Although king e8 is preferred by engine, but in both cases black's position is lost. Okay, another check, king f7, g6 check, king g8, and now black king is finding himself in a very awkward position. If it weren't this queen controlling the diagonal, then we could announce a checkmate, right? Queen takes e3, finally let's win this knight. 
I already forgot that we have a hanging knight in there. Bishop c5 attacking the queen, creating a loop for the king. Yeah, trying to somehow f develop the pieces. And knight f8. Yeah, time to get rid of this bishop. Uh, and also, black is covering that vulnerable e6 square. Black is activating the light squared. Uh, bishop, but uh, this knight f8 allows white rook to penetrate the eighth rank. Look how accurate Moro is. Bishop b7 and rook takes a8. An inaccuracy, guys. Here's rook f8. Check is winning. Such a pity that white failed to find this move. If here, then queen e5. Now, yeah, there is this th threat. If bishop c8, then queen takes c5. Just, yeah. Bishop h3 can step into knight e7 checkmate. Queen a1 check king d2. Yeah, again, white is winning, guys. White is winning. So that's a pity that white failed to find that rook f8. Instead, we have rook a8. But again, as you can see by uh, throwing a look at the engine evaluation, white is still doing better. h5. Cementing black's king side, strengthening this pawn, and already white wants to win this pawn. Rook h7, black finds a good defense, guys. Yeah, by the way, queen a1 check won't give you anything. There is this checkmate going to appear. You can't leave the hg8 diagonal. That's why we have rook h7, a very, very beautiful move by MVL. If g takes h7, then king h8, and black is almost managing to equalize, guys. Yeah, black is equalizing. Rook h7 was made such a lovely move. Rook e1. Uh, bishop takes c6, queen takes c6. As you can see, still white is winning. Bishop d4, king d2, queen takes b2. Now there is this threat, or queen c3 can even force to trade off the pieces, the queens. Queen c4 check. Now look, the best move in here is king e2, guys. King e2. And now no longer there is a check from c3. And yeah, that's how white can win. For example, let's make a random move a5, then bishop e6 check. If here, then queen c8. Both guarding this pawn and also hitting on f8. White is winning. So king e2 is such a subtle and nice move which white failed to find. Instead played queen c4 check. We can see that rook d1 is a good alternative. Check. King h8, king d3. a5, queen c8. Yeah, queen c8 and already we have an equality. Bishop f5 is the move. Threatening pawn takes h7. For example, let's play a4, then pawn takes h7. And there is no knight h7 move because you can get checkmated. So, bishop f5 was a very nice chance for white. Instead, we have queen c8. White hurried, hurried with that move. And now black is starting to give some checks. Then goes b3. At the same time, opening up the queen's diagonal, c takes b3. What is this rook doing on h7, guys? Uh, it may seem that this is a position from a composed uh, puzzle. What if we capture on a4, then queen b4? a4, another interesting move. Envil suddenly starts to play very well. Rook b1, queen b4, here. Check, queen d5, queen b4, queen c4, and now black is no longer interested in in a draw. Black is going for a kill, queen d2. Envil now wants to win, bishop g4. Okay, the bishop g4 is a terrible mistake, and white is losing. Queen c8 is the move. Let's see, bishop g4, and already, yeah, the evaluation is in black's favor. There goes the, the a pawn, check, here. Queen c5 check here, a2. Yeah, black brought the queen to c5, protected this knight, and goes 
for a pawn promotion. Rook c1, a1 queen. Yes, yeah, suddenly uh, the third queen is on the board. Rook takes c5. White decides to win the queen on the c5. If rook a1 then check. Uh, even uh, bishop a1 is winning, but you can first win this pawn on b3 and then go for bishop a1. Why not? Okay, rook c5, bishop c5, queen d5 check, king d3 check. Let's see how is uh, black going to realize the advantage. The queens are gone, gone, but now white is not resigning because switching this rook into the game is not an easy task. White is not resigning. White is two... No, white is a knight and a rook down, but is not resigning, guys. King g8, king takes e5, has only two pawns against the knight and uh, uh, rook, right? But uh, white now will win more material. Suddenly, uh, somehow now black wants to activate his position. This is like a study-like position, guys. Crazy, crazy, knight h7. All the squares are guarded. This is how Black is trying to get uh, out of that difficult situation. Check. King f7. But now uh, White has a menacing pawn on the h7 and Black King, uh, Black Rook, sorry, can't leave the 8th rank. How to leave the 8th rank and corner this King? That's a task which MVL manages to solve. Here we go, guys. That pawn drops. Okay, suddenly, finally, he's making a move with his rook. He's really good in cornering. Okay, and once you're uh, moving your bishop, there is this g5 move. This pawn sacrifice allows Blake to open up the bishop's diagonal and free the rook. Yeah. There was a Tsukzavank type position for white, moved the bishop and now it's our king d6, black resigned, if for example, I don't know, bishop f7, then here with a mate to follow, enough is enough. Sorry, white resigned, here yeah, white resigned, Alexander Morazevich resigned. What a painful game, guys, for white. All the games, throughout all the game, White was dominating, played a brilliant game, but missed victory. And on the other hand, MVL showed brilliant, uh, really impressive defensive skills, and all hail to him, he's winning. Okay, in the end, the chess problem, the task is to mate into its watch to move. We'll wait for your answer in the comment section. Thanks for watching, we'll see you in my next video. Take care.